Today we're going to tackle a bread crust fly. Now the trick to this fly comes in the preparation. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to start off with a whole ruffed grouse feather. Now you can see on the inside of this feather we have a little white kind of groove that goes along the whole feather down the middle. And What you want to do is you want to take a razor blade you're just going to basically split this feather along that white groove. So I'm just going to take my razor blade and get it started right along that white groove. And I'm just going to follow it all the way up the feather. Now, once you do this, you're going to end up with two pieces of feather. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'll just kind of show you what I mean. And so I'm just going to take it, I'm going to split it right down the middle of that feather with the razor blade. Then what I'm going to end up with is a piece of feather like this. And what I've done is I've just trimmed all the long pieces of the feather right up against the stem. Now you can see the stem is full of a bunch of white stuff. It's called pith. Uh, what you want to do is you want to soak this in a cup of warm water for 30 minutes to an hour. Then you want to scrape it all out with your fingernail or some type of scraper. So you can see I've got most of it out there. I have a little more to go. You can use a penny. That helped um, myself. You can also use your fingernail. Just kind of get under there and scrape all that stuff off. And what I found is uh, it's easiest to let them soak longer. This one I didn't quite let soak long enough. So you can see there's still a little bit in there. Um, so I'll let it soak a little bit longer um, and scrape out kind of the rest of that white stuff. You want almost as much of it out as uh, you can. Uh, all of it if you can um, or just 90% of it. It seems like I cannot quite get all of it scraped out. You can see I got most of it there. Um, but usually that's good enough to actually um, tie a fly with. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with some brown Vivas 14-aught thread. And we're just going to get our thread started here. I'm going to use a Tiemco 3761 or 3769 nymph hook. Uh, the 3761 is just longer. So if you like yours to look a little longer, you can use that longer shank hook. Uh, I'm going to use a 3769 in this video. I like mine to be a little bit kind of shorter and more compact. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some dubbing. Uh, any dubbing. doesn't matter what kind of dubbing you're using. Um, and we're just going to build up basically a, a body, kind of a template for our um, roughed grouse feather to lay on. We're going to taper this body so that it looks kind of like a grub where it's thicker at the head and tapers down nice and thin towards the back. So you just take some dubbing. I'm using some super fine dubbing here. Color doesn't matter. Um, kind doesn't matter. Um, I like to use super fine just because it's um, fairly easy to work with. It dubs pretty tight little balls and goes on the body pretty smooth. And literally all I'm doing is just building up a base for the body. And once I have my body kind of tapered and built, you can wrap through it with a couple of kind of cross-hatched wraps. That'll just kind of help bite it down and lay nice and smooth. And then we're ready for our feather. So usually I let it soak in water while I'm kind of prepping. We're going to tie this in right at the back there and wrap forward. Now I'm going to take this roughed grouse feather and I'm going to oh, got a little bit of a split right on the tip. You want to make sure you don't have any of those splits right on the tip where you're about to tie, so we'll just trim it back just a little bit. 
Sometimes the, the tip of that feather can get really thin. I want to tie it so that, that where we scraped out the pith lays down on the shank of the hook. So I'm just going to take that feather and I'm going to wrap it around the shank of the hook. Now you can see my fibers are nice and long. I did that on purpose. It's just easier to keep them long when I first tie them in. And then I'm going to trim it here once I tie it off. It's easier to kind of leave them a little longer than it is to trim them perfectly even on the feather. And I'll show you what I mean here. So on this feather, you can see I've left them fairly long. And the reason for that is because it's really hard to get in here with your scissors and get nice and even um, up tight against the, the feather. So I leave them a little bit long to start with. And then you can always come in here and kind of fluff them up a little bit. And then you can come in and trim them after the fact with your scissors to the desired length that you like. Just like that. And some guys like them a little longer. Some guys like a little, really short kind of stubble. It's just, it's all personal preference and kind of the look that you like. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in or tie in the collar. And you can use a few different materials for this. Um, a lot of guys like to use a grizzly hen feather. Um, I actually like to use partridge. It just looks a little kind of buggier um, to me. has that nice kind of variegated look. Um, but it's literally, it's personal preference. Um, grizzly India hen is usually what most guys use. Um, you can also use brown. I found that the brown ones make the fly look a little too brown. I mean your fly already kind of has a lot of brown in it with that um, roughed grouse. So I, I tend to stay away from the brown. The partridge is kind of the, the one that I like the looks of. But it's personal preference. You can use the the grizzly, uh, grizzly India hen that most guys call for. We're just going to tie this partridge in right up on the eye of the fly. Now we're just going to lay down a nice smooth kind of thread base for our partridge to lay on. And I'm going to take this feather and I'm going to gently kind of sweep all the the fibers back. That way when I go to wrap it, it'll somewhat cooperate with me. As I wrap forward with the partridge. I picked a fairly short piece of partridge here, so I'm actually going to take my hackle pliers and help me out here. out your stem. Then you can stroke all the fibers back and just lay a few wraps right up on top of them. Then you can whip finish. out your thread and that is a finished bread crust it's a great little what I assume is a cased caddis fly uh, very deadly little pattern out here on the west 
Uh, it's caught a lot of fish for me. Uh, you can tie it with a bead head as well. That's really deadly. Fish it behind kind of a dropper. Uh, but that is the bread crust.